In this video, I'm going to walk you through using the uh, updated script on my blog for creating a content slider uh, in SharePoint. Uh, back in July of 2013, I actually created another script in my blog uh, for using this same library, this unslider library, and using uh, SP services to create a content slider. And this was nice because it worked in 2007, 2010, and 2013. Um, but there were some limitations there and there was some confusion with how to get some of the content to work in there. So I thought I would update the script, I would use a newer version of Unslider, a newer version of jQuery, and then give you guys some more features. Uh, so let's dive in and walk through setting up that uh, slider. So to get the source code for the updated slider, I've actually put it into GitHub. So if you go to github.com slash mrackley slash pate slider, you will see the code there. Um, you will see a few main files. You'll see the uh, pate slider.js file, and this is the file that has all the logic in it. You also see one called pate slider cewp, and this is the file that needs to go into a content editor web part in your SharePoint site. I've then included the unslider files for their style sheets and the unslider file for the JavaScript file as well. So you can actually download these locally or you can reference them in the CDN, but I wanted to provide those files for you so that you would have them. And then over in your SharePoint site, what you need to do is you need to create a list to store your slides. Uh, previously, I sent you through a pretty long process of setting up a specific list a specific way. Um, but I thought I would simplify, simplify everything and use a promoted links list because a promoted links list has all the fields we need. So it makes it much easier uh, for you to create this slider. So what you would need to do is come into your SharePoint site and you want to add an app. And when you go to add an app, you would want to add a promoted links list. Promoted links. So give your list a name. I'm just going to call this one promoted for this example. And what you'll see when you get this new list for whatever you call it, let me change the view here to the all promoted links view. Uh, you can see it has a title field, a background image field, a description field, a link location, and an order. And so these are the exact same fields that we're going to use for our carousel so that you can specify the image you want to be for the background of your carousel. You can just the, put the description in there. This is the content for the slide, a link location for when a, where a user goes and they click on it, and the order you want the slides to appear. So the one thing I do suggest you changing is to go into your list settings for this promoted links list, and then go into the description field and change that to an enhanced rich text field. And that way you can get uh, enhanced rich text, rich text, right? You can get different text colors, different text sizes. Uh, you can stylize it a lot more. If we look over at this list I already have called promoted links, you can see that we have a pre-baked list already. So if I change this back to that all promoted links view, we see our entries in there. We've got an image location, we've got a description which is now rich text, we've got the link it goes to and they click on it, and we've got the order that they go into. Uh, I also added an additional field called department, which we're going to go into later why this is kind of cool. But for now, let's just look at these uh, entries. So we have entries in here for five slides. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to take the source files from the GitHub project and we want to put those into your site assets library. So I'm going to open up my site assets library. I'm going to take these files, the pateslider.js and pateslider cewp and just drag and drop these into my site assets library. So those files are now uploaded. Now all that's left to do is to create a page and drop a content editor web part on that page and link it to the file we uploaded and our slide should work. So I'm going to go into site pages and I am going to add a new web part page. I'm going to call this web part page Pate Slider. And you don't have to create a new page. You can drop this web part onto any existing page. But for the purposes of this, I'm just adding a new page. And now I'm going to add a web part to that page. And I'm going to add a media and content, content editor web part. And now I am going to edit that web part and I'm going to point it at that 
file we uploaded to our site assets called pate slider cewp.js and apply that. So you can see that we now have a slider on the page and the slider is using those items from, from the promoted links list. You've got arrows here so you can scroll through them. If you click on the slide, you can see it takes you to a different page. If I click on a dot, I can go to a specific slide. You can see that we've got some different coloring here on this slide. So, um, and you also see there's a, a black border on this slide. So this is, now we get to see some of the features that I've added to this uh, script that weren't in the previous script. If we open up the file for uh, paint slider CEWP, this is the file that you'll have the ability to make some changes to in order to change the way the slider works. Uh, one of the first things you'll see is there are some styles for uh, a class called paint slide. And this is nice because you can now apply a class to each one of your slides. So if you want to force them to have a specific height and width, you can, or if you want to add a border to them, you can. So you can use these styles to uh, really change and make sure that your slides are consistent with which you could not do easily in the solution I had before. I also added the ability for you to override uh, the nav navigation circles. So if those dots, if you want to change their color, you could change the style for that. And you could also override the style for those next and previous arrows. In this example, uh, the out of the box, you'll see those circles over the sliders. Um, and these are actually done with styles that you can override if you don't like these circles and want to use something else. Some other things about this script is when you call this method, you need to pass in some parameters. Uh, one of them being the name of your promoted links list. And in our instance, it was called promoted links. Uh, and the new feature, which I think is really cool, is you pass in the, the name of the view that you want to get the items for. So if you only want to see specific items in a list, all you have to do is create a view that shows the items you want to show and then pass in that view name here. So we're telling it that we want to show all promoted links, which is the name of the list that shows all the links. Some other options you have in here, uh, you can specify the HTML you want to display for the next and previous arrows. Right now I'm just doing a less than and greater than sign. And then we have some unslider options here. We have the option to autoplay or slide, to go infinite. You can change the animation. So instead of going a horizontal animation, it can be vertical. Uh, do you want to show the arrows or not? Do you want to show the dots or not? Do you want people pressing the keys to advance the slides? And then what do you want the delay to be between the slides changing? So these are all things you can go in there and tweak to get this experience for the slider to be completely uh, the way you want. So let me just show you how we can use this view title here to really change the way the sliders work. So if you remember back in our list here for the promoted links, we had this field called department. So what happens if I go and create a view and I just want to create a view for marketing slides. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new view called marketing and it is going to have uh, the same fields as our all as our all, uh, all promoted links, but I'm going to come through here and say I want to only show slides where the department is equal to marketing. Okay, so we now have this new view called marketing and it just has these two entry, entries in it. So if I go into that file in our site assets library and I change the name of the view title from all promoted links and I change that to just marketing and save that, now when we view the slider, instead of having five slides, we only have the two that were used for the marketing department. So this allows users to create uh, views for specific slides without having to go through and change any code or know how to code or do anything like that or change any queries. They just create a view, give it a name, and then update that script to say, use this view. So that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, feel free to get in there and dig around and change the styles, create some views, um, and good luck. <laughs>